Hey, it's Garrett Biss. I got a question somebody asked me the other day, uh, why so many people tend to relapse after getting sober, after starting their recovery? Uh, it, it tends to be something that happens that's common. I hate the word or I hate the phrase that relapse is part of recovery because I feel like it only fuels the tendency for that. If we accept it and we think that it's normal, then our chance of relapsing is much greater. I'm not saying that it's not a part of recovery. I just don't think that affirming the fact that relapse has to be a part of recovery helps us or serves us in any way. But to answer the question, why do so many people relapse when they're in their recovery, especially early on in their recovery, well, the quick answer is that for how, when you got to that place that you were, where you were constantly relying on that addictive substance or behavior, when that became your coping mechanism, your ability to deal with the stresses and challenges of life, it was a long life path that you went to to get to that point to where you absolutely needed this other thing every day or very regularly to deal with your life. So there, were, uh, there was a lot of conditioning, a lot of life experiences, a lot of things that happened to you on your journey to get to that place. So thinking that you're going to completely undo that in a short period of time is not realistic and it's not very likely. So a lot of the times people relapse is because they learn how to be sober, they learn how to live in recovery uh, in a certain context or for a short period of time, but then their coping, the coping skills that they have completely get depleted or a new stressor comes up or a new challenge comes up and it pushes them over the threshold for which they can naturally cope with and deal with those stresses and challenges of life. So if you're new in recovery and you're able to operate at this level without your drug of choice or that behavior of choice, uh, and this is the amount of stress that you can deal with, well, if something new comes up, then that's going to exceed your ability or your limit. Uh, and, and that might fuel that relapse. That might have you go back to your old ways or simply just the stress and the challenge and the constant energy and focus that's put into your recovery plan wears you down. And just like, you know, just like our, our minds get tired, just like our body gets physically tired when we're doing something, if it's new to us, there's a lot of strain, a lot of stress. And when it's new to us, it can wear us down and wear down that ability to cope naturally with those stresses and challenges and that can lead us to our old ways. We develop, you know, when we become addicted to things, we just develop this, uh, this intimate understanding of I've got this kind of relief valve. I've got this, this thing that can help me deal with these emotions inside that I don't want to deal with. Uh, and when we become accustomed to that and so habitually go to that thing, it's just like having an itch and scratching it. It becomes a habit. You know, we don't even think about it. We do it. Well, when you're in, really in your addiction, that's what there's this substance or behavior really becomes. It's not something you really think about. It's just so normal that when you feel a sensation inside, you've conditioned your body to say, when I feel the sensation, I scratch it. I scratch that itch or I commit or uh, I engage in whatever this substance or behavior is. So that's a huge contributing factor. Another big reason is when any uh, addiction that we have, whether it's a behavior or a substance, is something that helps us numb some emotional discomfort inside of us. We have this emotional discomfort and then we seek something external to deal with that pain or that discomfort. When you stop introducing that substance or that behavior to your body, then the emotions that you have uh, it, it can be very raw. We're feeling emotions that we're not used to feeling for, we haven't felt for a long period of time. So it can, we're feeling emotions much more deeply uh, and much more sharply than what, we've, what we're used to experiencing. So the same emotion, the same life events, the same experiences that we have, it might have you know, rubbed us or, or affected us uh, you know, to a certain level before because we were numbing that emotion. We were dis, you know, dissipating the power of that emotion. Now that we don't have that coping mechanism or that ability to numb that emotion, that same challenge is going to feel, you know, is going to cut us much deeper, be much more challenging, much more, you know, and these are, and the, you know, these are emotions on both ends. You know, the, even the positive emotions sometimes can lead people to relapse or using again because they're just not used to feeling that level of positive emotion and especially negative emotions when those challenges come up. Um, and when your mind starts to clear because your, your body is overcoming this, you know, this dependency on this chemical, now your mind starts thinking about things in ways that you hadn't before. And maybe you start looking at the past. And one of the reasons that we keep running to that thing that helps us numb is because we've got demons in our head and we got demons that are telling us, reminding us of all those things that we're guilty about, reminding us of the, the levels of shame that we have, reminding us of the opinions of other people or the ways that we've fallen short of, uh, of who we are and fallen short of the expectations of other people and the expectations that we have. And as your mind clears and you begin to think about these things and process these things, that can be 
very challenging, very stressful, and you know, just very real to deal with the reality of the situation. It's something that we we're avoiding that we didn't have to think about for a long time. So all of these things come together and they perpetuate uh, the very high rate of relapse for people, especially early in recovery doesn't mean that relapse has to be a part of your journey. And I just really want to emphasize that. It doesn't mean that it has to be just because it was for somebody else doesn't mean it has to be for you. There's certainly resources out there and there's certainly uh, ways to go about your recovery that can help you prevent that. Um, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for a holistic model of helping somebody in their recovery. There's many different factors or influences or, or things that can lead somebody to that path of addiction, but everybody's journey to addiction is an individual journey. It's a unique combination of life experiences, of conditioning, and of, of factors, biological factors, sociological factors, psychological factors, spiritual factors that get a person to where they are. And there's no one way to get beyond that. There's no one program that will help all people get beyond that. So what we really need to do to be effective is take a holistic approach and find tools and resources that will address uh, any factors all across the spectrum, bio, biopsychosocial and spiritual factors, so that you have the best chance for thriving in your recovery, the best chance of really sustaining a successful recovery. Um, so a lot of the work that I do, and especially with thriving in your recovery, that's what we focus on is trying to address all those areas. Because here's a problem, you can find one cause or one contributing factor to your addiction, and if your program is just focused on that and you're just trying to uh, make progress in that area, then really you're, you're, you're leaving yourself very vulnerable to all the other factors. Maybe you're only focused on the biological and the psychological component of your addiction and then you have something that challenges you spiritually or you have something that challenges you socially. Well, if all your time and energy is just focused on this narrow, um, this, this narrow area of your recovery, then any, you know, anything else is just gonna be a surprise and will knock you off, uh, off balance very, very quickly. So uh, if you're looking for a more holistic approach, there's many great books out there. And of course, I've got some resources that can help. You can go to thrivinginyourrecovery.com to learn more about the program or just learn more about what a holistic uh, program or approach looks like. Thanks for checking out this video. Please share it with uh, anybody that might need to hear it. Hope this answers your question. If you were the one that asked it or if you were somebody else who, who kind of had the same question in your mind. Anyway, you be well.